Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a really cool exponential trigonometric or maybe exponentially trigonometric equation. We have 2 to the power tangent squared of x plus 2 to the power secant squared of x equals 24. How is that possible? You take trigonometric values like tangent and secant, you raise 2 to the power those values and you get 24. Such a large number, right? Well, here's what you need to think about. Sine and cosine are always between negative one and one inclusive, even when, never mind. When they're complex numbers, the story is different. But we're not gonna get into that because there's another channel that focuses on complex numbers. Do you know what it's called? A plus BI, an appropriate name, right? So go ahead and check it out if you haven't done so already. So in this channel, we focus on real numbers, sometimes complex solutions, come up. Okay, so how do we solve a problem like this? And we've done a similar problem recently, by the way, and that was a popular video. That's why I wanted to make a similar, maybe a tiny bit different version of this problem because I, I like exponential equations and you know that probably, and I think my audience likes it too. So to solve this problem, and by the way, this is really cool because we also use this idea in a function, functional equation, function equation, function problem, Something that came up recently, I think it was on 29th of August, two days ago, yay! If you remember that, go ahead and uh, check it out if you haven't done so. But anyways, we use the same idea. But this time it's better because we have the square. You know what I'm talking about? This is what I'm talking about. Secant squared x can be written as one plus tangent squared. And this is a super duper helpful identity. You know why? We use this in calculus, we use this in Pre-calculus, like with limits, integrals, derivatives, so many things, particularly integrals. Imagine you're trying to integrate tangent squared. Add one and subtract one, you get secant squared minus one. Secant squared is the derivative of tangent. Boom, you're done. Tangent x minus x. So easy, you can do it mentally, right? Great, now, how do we use it in our equation though? And where does that come from? Let me quickly tell you. If you write sine squared plus cosine squared equals one and divide everything by cosine squared, you get tangent squared plus one equals secant squared. Easy, right? Of course, cosine shouldn't be zero. When cosine is zero, secant is undefined anyway, so we're good. Are we? Hopefully. So this is the identity that'll take care of this problem. Let's use it. So tangent squared, leave that alone, and replace uh, secant squared in this exponent with one plus tangent squared of x. Great. I'm trying to make my t's like that with a little tail so that they don't uh, mix with the plus sign. Okay, this is equal to 24, great. Now, here's what we're gonna do. Properties of exponents, super helpful. Memorize them, use them all the time. We can split it up. Two to the power tangent squared of x, plus two to the power one times two to the power tangent squared of x. Remember, you can undo that. And now we have something that's showing up. So why don't we call that something, right? Does that make sense at all? We do see two to, uh, two to the power tangent squared more than once, which means we must use substitution. You don't have to, but it's a good idea. An alternative would be the following. If you don't want to use substitution, factor out two to the power tangent squared. By the way, there's a hidden one here. And I just write one plus two. I think this is probably easier. You know what, let's do that. Factor that out and now this is gonna be a three, divide by three, or what times three equals 24? Can you answer that question? Absolutely, it's eight. Yay, we got the answer almost. Okay, we're getting closer. So we get this equation, it's exponential because exponential equations are awesome. How do we take care of this, right? Again, the alternative would be if you didn't want this, then you could just, what's the alternative? Anyways, I forgot, something like that. Whatever you do, you'll arrive at this. So how do you solve it though? Eight can be written as, ready? Two to the power three, ta-da, yes. This implies tangent squared equals three. But what happens if X is complex, that's some, something for you to think about because complex numbers are different, right? So now we can safely say that in the real world, 
tangent squared x must be 3. Yay! That's a good improvement, isn't it? So from here, we get different things. First of all, there are two numbers whose square equals 3. What are those numbers? Square root of 3 and the opposite of that number. Why? Because when you square a negative number, you also get a positive answer. In the real world, at least. So from here, tangent x can be root 3 or tangent x can be negative root 3. Awesome. Now we're going to pick uh, each of these equations and solve them separately because they have a bunch of solutions. So let's start with the first one. I call this first and then I call this second. So what does this imply? Tangent x equals square root of 3. You can basically replace root 3 with tangent pi over 3. Did you know that? It is 60 degrees or pi over 3 radians. If you think about the 30, 60, 90 triangle, if this is 1 and this is 2, this is root 3. And notice that opposite over adjacent with respect to 60 degrees. I should probably make my triangle like this, which probably would make more sense like. Okay, let's make it this way. Oops, that's not a 2. That's a root 3. This is 1 and this is a 2. You see, root 3 divided by 1 is tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Don't forget that. Now, from here, we can safely say that x must be pi over 3, but that's not the only solution because tangent is periodic and the period is pi, so we're going to add multiples of pi. Not 2 pi, like sine and cosine, because they have different periods. Tangent will change or just make a cycle every pi radians. All right? So this is one of the solutions. And of course, if k is equal to 1, for example, you get 4 pi over 3, which is another solution, in addition to pi over 3, so on and so forth. But there are infinitely many solutions from that branch. Now, this is number 1. Let's take a look at number 2 and see how many solutions we get from there. How many solutions do you think we're going to get? Same. Similar. Okay. How do I find, I can't draw a triangle with a negative side length, right? Here, the unit circle comes to the rescue. Uh-oh. I didn't mean the, okay. Here, unit circle comes to the rescue. <laughs> All right. So tangent is root 3 here. I want to make it negative. And that can happen in the second quadrant really quick if you just subtract it from pi. In other words, uh, negative root 3 is tangent of pi minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. That's the smallest angle for which tangent is negative root 3. So from here we get x equals 2 pi over 3 plus k pi, or if you want to use a different integer, n pi. Did I say n and k are integers? Now I said it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.